Okay. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for life. New mercies, dear Lord. New blessings, new gifts, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you that we're in the land of the living today to give you all honor, to give you glory, to give you praise, dear Lord, to be carriers of your light, Father God, to share your light and love with others, Father God. We pray that you will be glorified and lifted up as we come together to study your word. Father God, I pray that we will come with open hearts for what you want to pour out of your servant, dear Lord. We thank you even for your servant, Sister Sylvia. Father God, we thank you for her willingness, dear Lord. Oh God, to be before you, to study, to be able to be to pour out something into us, dear Lord. God Almighty, I pray it will revive something, dear Lord. It will ignite something in us, Father God. It will give us something new, Father God, and it will produce fruit, oh God, today. Dear Lord, we thank you for your water and we thank you for even new seeds that will be planted today. Lord, for others that will be joining, I pray that you will hasten their steps, God Almighty. And we pray even for those who will hear the recording, who are not able to join with us presently dear Lord, that you will do a new work in them. Dear Lord, you desire nothing but good things for us, sweet Jesus. And we thank you for your word that is it's just infinite, dear Lord. There is so much more. Even when we think we have We've been poured into today. We know you have even more for us tomorrow because it is your desire for us to live an abundant life. And that abundant life comes through this knowledge of you, this understanding of you. For us, as we seek you, you continue to reveal more and more of who you are, God Almighty. And we are just in love with what we have seen so far. So we look forward to even more. God, we give this day to you. Have your own way, God. Let your Holy Spirit just flow in and through each and every one of us. Father God, we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, so today um, we have a, a, a speaker for today, but before we go into our speaker, our new teacher today, we are just going to open up for um, testimonies. If anyone just wants to, you know, even give a praise report or testify of the goodness of the Lord this week, or just share a quick word of encouragement, the, um, the time is now for you to do so. I'll go, I'll go first. Okay. Um, so this week was my last day at work. And um, I think... Uh-oh. Can everyone else hear Sister Sylvia? Is it just me who's frozen or is she frozen? She's frozen. She's frozen. Oh, okay. Sister Sylvia, I'm going to just text her and let her know. If you can hear us, you are frozen. All right. While, while she gets back on, I'm just going to give a quick testimony because I can even hear, hear the testimony going around in my yard. <laughs> I have a neighbor that has just been so kind to me. Um, she, you know, we've been living here a good while now. And, you know, she sees uh, myself and Aaliyah running in and running out. And um, she's taking it upon herself to, uh, to take care of my lawn on a weekly basis. <laughs> she comes over, she mows, she prunes. She, you know, weeds out and, you know, without being asked and, uh, you know, God sees our needs and, you know, just he's concerned about every little thing. And so I'm so thankful for her. I say I can hear her because I hear the lawnmower <laughs> going in the background. And I'm just so grateful because we know we are, we're all so busy doing this and that. So, you know, when there's even just this one little thing that someone else can help with, you know, I, we're just so grateful for it. So I'm so grateful for her and so grateful for even the strength that he gives her because this lady, I think she's going to be 82 this week. <laughs> Not this week, I'm sorry, this year, but she rides her more and she invents work. That's what I tell her all the time. She, you know, finds things to do. And one of the things she's made a part of her doing is taking care of my lawn. And I'm just so, so grateful, so grateful for it. So giving thanks for that blessing. Amen. <laughs> and, and it's important to know that she's a Caucasian lady <laughs> that is helping us out like that. 
Any race, <laughs> any race. But I, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. No, no, I'm just saying. You know, some would scoff. You know, some would. You know. Mm -hmm. so but some... with... go ahead, go ahead, mom. That's no. a favor of God on you, <laughs> child of God. Yeah, yeah. Favor. favor. I receive it in Jesus' name. Any way He wants to send it. Amen. Love... Amen. Um. Anybody else have a testimony? I'm not sure what happened on my end, but if it does happen again, I'll have to switch computers. I pray that it doesn't happen while uh, I'm teaching. Uh, but if it does, I'll just have to switch computers. Not sure what happened. But um, I was saying before, I thank God for giving me that strength and bravery to make that kind of a decision because I know who I am and I know what I need in what space. So it wasn't a decision that I took lightly. It was a scary decision, but at some point through prayer, my spirit was settled in the decision that I made. So I thank God for um, giving me that bravery and that reliance on him to be able to make a decision like that. Amen. And for those who join afterwards, if you just share your decision again. Oh, um, I, today, um, not today, Friday was my last day at my work. I, I handed in my two weeks notice um, because <laughs> the environment had started becoming toxic and um, I had to choose me over being in that kind of environment. So I thank God for settling my spirit with that decision because it was a struggle before. And um, I thank God for having a supportive husband who said, that environment is not good for you. You need to unplug. Mm, amen. And we're going to pray for you just for what's coming next for you. You know, amen. when we open up in prayer at the end, praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I have a testimony. I'm just, I'm, I'm just reflecting on Lisa's testimony when she says her neighbor. And all I'm thinking in her mind is that that's going to be a lifelong friend. And just because mm. I could relate to it, that's what happened uh, when I moved to South Windsor, how many years ago? I think my son, maybe 16 years ago or something like that. And my neighbor at that point in time, it was just him and I, and come and go. He would cut our lawn, anything that would happen around the home. He would say, hey, I could take care of this or um, any tool that I needed until I got my own, right? He took mm -hmm. care of it. You know, he was... Um, he was a Caucasian man too with her with his daughter. He was by himself at the time until his daughter came and moved with him. And they are really, uh, they're like family to me right now. And so um, mm -hmm. still to these years, any type of accomplishments or just anything else um, I share with them just because um, they, they've been closer than some of my family. But I also want to uh, congratulate Sister Sylvia too in so many ways. Um, a part of my testimony was about the, the boldness and the bravery in which you took in a hostile environment. Um, and that was my journey maybe about three years ago now, three years ago, I took that leap of faith where I was not just in a hostile environment for like three or four, I mean, almost five years, but it came to a point where I, I was, my faith was being compromised in wanting to um, take, take a step or being asked to take a step that, did not align with my faith or with my values. And again, it's probably one of those large organizations like yourself too. I'm not sure you know, where you're coming from, but it's that. And I thank God for just, I didn't have the two weeks notice. I just said, this is it. And that was it. And for where I am today, I'm still growing. I'm still, you know, but I thank God for the leap of faith where we don't need to understand what that destiny is going to look at, look like. But as long as we have God in the midst of it all, um, you know, it's, I, I, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to have forums like this or supportive people to kind of, you know, speak into my life, um, in regards to what some of that may look like. And so as I reflect, you know, you're coming out of something this week, I would say officially is when we opened up our doors to our healthcare practice, um, here on Day Hill Road. Um, and that was a spoken word back, I think, you know, many years ago, I think the first time I met uh, Bishop Ramsey, I didn't even, you know, I would say maybe, you know, my grandmother has always like given me those spoken words that you can, you can go back to school, you can do this. And I did. And in the midst of it all, I, I, I would say in 2015 or 14, I met 
Bishop Ramsey is, is God is going to transition you into a, you know, into another space. And the space was healthcare. And here I am today. But as I continue to grow with him, he continues to, you know, transform us out of the space that we're in to spaces like what you've done. And I say, Sister Sylvia, continue to trust the Lord, which I know that you have, and you're bold and you're brave because not, you know, that's people like you who take steps like that. But just to show you that God is able to do above and beyond what we can ever expect or ask, right? And so I say this, I share a piece of that. Um, I still have unknowns. I'm still unsure. But as I even prayed with Sister Lisa this morning, I says, God, I'm not going to even ask you for one thing. The fact that I'm able to just live through today to see that a glimpse of what you've promised me happened, that's enough for me. And he's going to give us what we need for tomorrow. And so that is my testimony to say that, you know, be bold, be brave in the Lord. He he has written what our, what his expectations of us can look like. And I say this to say this, get out there and, and do what, he, you know, he's put in you. He's put that same gift in you to run the organizations that you are coming from. So what more can he give you in more in alignment where you're not even challenged or having to say, well, you know, be compromised about your faith, right? How much more of alignment and being able to hear from him can that give you to be able to do what you're going to do next? So I'm excited, but I share to share to edify those that are on this line this morning in Jesus name. <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Awesome encouragement. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Would anyone else like to and um, share a word, a quick word of encouragement, our testimony, praise report. Okay. Well, if not, we're going to go ahead and get started with our study today. If it's something you want to share later, um, please go ahead and do so. But going to um, hand it over to Sister Sylvia, I'll just say, you know, uh, the Lord, as I asked the Lord for, you know, who to um, teach on this platform, I literally said to him, um, you know, I thought he, Sister Sylvia came to my mind and I said, you know, well, Lord, you know, um, I don't really know her personally, but if it is that you would like her to talk on this, this platform, let me see her as soon as I walk into church, let her be right there because I don't know where she usually sits. And literally as I opened the door, Hers was the first piece I saw, <laughs> you know, and I was like, oh, Lord, you're something else. So I just that was my confirmation um, that she was the one who should um, minister on today. And I just thank the Lord that as I spoke to her, she was so receptive and willing to do it in the midst of, you know, her schedule and all that she is, you know, doing in her life at this time. So we'll just hand it over to um, Sister Sylvia at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Lisa. It is well, an honor and a privilege any time that I get to speak on God's word. Um, every one of us has to be prepared for we are soldiers in God's army. So if you're a soldier, you always have to be prepared when you're called for duty. You know. So for me, when you did ask me, I was honored to do this. And I pray that there will be a word for someone, a word of encouragement, a word of uplifting <clears throat> for someone. And I must say, Recover It All this month is so needed, you know, because we all need a boost. We all need an encouragement. But the Bible verse that I chose had a lot to unpack. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to unpack it all by the time um, um, we're closing. Um, first, if, if someone can read Psalm 71, verse 20 to 21 for me, I would appreciate it. I'll read because I'm already there. Um, okay. It says, uh, you who have shown me great and severe troubles shall revive me again and bring me up again from the depths of the earth. You shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Amen. You shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. That's an assurance from the Lord that 
indeed, you can recover it all. It, it, it gives no doubt. It gives no doubt at all. We can recover it all. And I know our main uh, verse is very long, but Sister Lisa, if you would do me the favor and read the first Samuel 36 to 20, because that's where I'm going to concentrate on. That's where God offloaded for, uh, 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 for, for this session. Okay, pulling it up. Okay, first Samuel 30, starting at verse six. Yes. Now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. So David went, he and the 600 men who were with him, and came to the brook Besor, where those stayed who were left behind. But David pursued he and 400 men, for 200 stayed behind, who were so weary that they could not cross the brook Besor. Then they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David, and they gave him bread and he ate, and they let him drink water. And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. So when he had eaten, his strength came back to him, for he had eaten no bread nor drunk water for three days and three nights. Then David said to him, to whom do you belong and where are you from? And he said, I am a young man from Egypt, servant of an Amalekite. And my master left me behind because three days ago I fell sick. We made an invasion of the Southern area of the Cherethites in the territory which belongs to Judah and of the Southern area of Caleb and we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said to him, can you take me down to this troop? So he said, swear to me by God that you will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will take you down to this troop. And when he had brought him down, there they were, spread out over all the land, eating and drinking and dancing, because of all the great spoil which they had taken from the land of the Philistines, and from the land of Judah. Then David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day. Not a man of them escaped, except 400 young men who rode on camels and fled. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. And nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them. David recovered all. And verse 20, or is that the last one? So thank you, Sister Lisa. You're welcome. The, uh, just a little background on this, where David <clears throat> was minding his own business, where if you read prior to the verses, he was encamped with the Philistine army for an invasion or an attack on um, Israel when this invasion in Ziklag happened. Now, sometimes in life, right, you'll be minding your own business when the enemy comes in with something that will shake you, with something that would cause you to be frustrated, right? So David's story here has a formula for how we can recover it all. When he got there and saw the raid and the burning and saw that his family, cattle, all of that had been taken away, the first thing that David and his men did was they wept bitterly. It says this in there. 
uh, let me see. It says they wept bitterly, David and his men, when they realized their loss. See, what that tells me is that it's okay when we go through trials to cry. It's okay when we go through trials to be saddened. It's okay when we go through trials to come together and mourn our loss, right? Because that's what they did. Sometimes we want to put up a brave front and we're suffering on the inside. But here, David and his men wept bitterly for their loss. Now, it's okay not to be okay. It's okay to cry. But what is not okay is to wallow in that, right? Is to wallow in that. Because when you go to the next verse, you would see that after David and his men wept bitterly, now David strengthened himself in the Lord because he knew what God has done for him before. See, a lot of times we might get bogged down with all the frustrations of the world, all everything that is coming at us. And we forget. And our first point of contact usually is picking up the phone and calling a friend. Our first point of contact is usually being frustrated and just lashing out. Our first point of contact is wallowing. But after David wallowed in his sorrow, he called for the ephod. That he called for the high priest to bring him the ephod. He knew where his strength was coming from. See, our first point of attack, our first point of response when calamity hits is to go down on our knees and seek the face of God. Don't stay down and wallow in all that is going on. You want to seek the face of God first. One, it's okay not to be okay. But two, when you're done with a, a crying, you go to the Lord and seek for the Lord's counsel. Because even in the book of Matthew 11, 28 to 29, the Lord said, come to me, all ye who are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. It's about time that we as Christians stand on God's word with no questions asked, knowing that the I am that I am will come through for us. Sometimes it may not be when we want him to come, but the God that we serve has our best interests at heart. So what I would implore each and every one of us is to seek the face of the Lord in every circumstance that we see ourselves in. It's not, it, it, I'm not saying don't pick up a phone and call your girlfriend. I'm not saying don't pick up a phone and call your mom. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is seek God's face first. Hear what God has to say to you about it. David went to the Lord and inquired of the Lord. And what he did was when he was, he waited for an answer. A lot of times we want to get involved in whatever is going on. We want to fix it and then give God the rest to figure out. He said, come to me with everything, not some, because our strength alone will fail us. But the I am that I am, the creator of the universe, the king of kings says, come to me. And I will lessen your burden, is what he said. I will take on that burden. It's about time that we gave it all. See, we're saying recover it all. In recovering it all, we also need to give all our burdens to God. Not some of our burdens, but all of our burdens. In, in order to recover it all, we need to give him all. Everything about us. Every thought about every thought that we think, whatever we think, do, and say, we need to lay it onto the foot of the master so that he, in turn, can give us the formula and the discernment to be able to recover it all. Now, David waited for the Lord's answer before he moved. 
A lot of times we put it before God and then while we're putting it before him, we're already moving ahead of him. He's supposed to lead us, not us leading the way and saying, God, follow. No, we need to be able to be patient enough, but it all stems from us understanding fully the God that we serve. It's hard because we're human beings and we're seeing with the physical eye. But we need to start looking at things from the spiritual lens of God. Because when you're looking at things from the spiritual lens of God, everything might look chaotic to the naked eye. But with the eye of God, there's a peace and there's a calmness. There's a song that says, it may look like I'm surrounded but folks don't know that I'm surrounded by you. It says, this is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. So with the naked eye, they're seeing that I'm surrounded. They're seeing the chaos. They're seeing the storm. They're seeing the frustration. They're seeing all that is going wrong around me. But because you're looking at it through the lens of the most high God, you're still and you're calm because you know who's in your boat, because you know who is there in your boat. So we have to be like David, where he sought the face of the Lord. After all of that, he sought the face of the Lord, and David waited. He says, be still and know that I am God. David waited for an answer from God before he moved. He didn't move ahead of God. He did, yes, he had, he had distractions, which is his men that were angry at him, his men that were willing to stone him because he was their leader. But with all those distractions, he had to focus on God. If he doesn't focus on God, he will not be able to hear God. It's one thing to put your, your, your need, your wants, and your desires before God. It's one thing to do that. And it's a totally different ballgame to be still and hear him. Because sometimes the Lord will speak in the stillness, in a still small voice. But when there are distractions, you cannot hear the Lord. David was able to focus and zone in on the fact that I need to put all distractions away and hear what the Lord has to say. And the Lord did not disappoint the Lord answered him and the Lord said, uh, what verse is, yes, the Lord said in verse eight, he said, pursue them. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. Pursue them. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. Another version would say, pursue them and you will recover it all. Not some, you will recover it all. He's asking us to bring all to him. And he's saying, you bring all to me, I will let you recover it all. But you have to give all to him if you want to recover it all. You can't give half to God, the creator of the universe, though I am that I am. You can't do some. Let him take it all on because he said in Matthew that come to me if you're burdened and I will give you rest. Come to him with everything. So number one, with recovering it all, it's okay to mourn what you think you have lost because you haven't lost it because God is going to let you recover it all. So, so number one, you have to Mourn what you think you lost. It's okay. We are human beings. That's how we operate. But number two is you have to inquire of the Lord. Let him be your first line of defense. Not picking up a phone calling your friends. Because when you call your friends, distraction are going to come. Excuse me. Distraction will come. But seek the face of God. And what you need him to help you to recover. And when you take it to him, brothers and sisters, pause. When you take it to him, be still. 
Because when you're still and you shut out every distraction, you would hear the Lord speak clearly. So what we also need to do is to pray for a spirit of discernment so we can hear when the Lord speaks to us, even if it's a whisper. Because sometimes God doesn't come loud. Sometimes he comes very softly. And you have to be in tune to be able to hear him. That's number three. David waited on the Lord and the Lord told him, you shall pursue and you shall recover it all. He was still, so he was able to hear the voice of the Lord. Now, the next thing that David did was he gathered his men. Now, the Lord has given me instruction that let's go, let's pursue because we will recover it all. So he had his men, 600 of them, going with him. But on the way, on the journey going, 200 of them got weary. They, get, they got tired. They couldn't continue the journey with David. So now he was going on that journey with 400 individuals. Watch this. Here's the key. Not everybody is going to go to that final destination with you, and it's okay. I'll say it again. Not everybody is supposed to go to your final destination with you. It's okay. However, also understand that those individuals played a vital role at some point. Everyone in your life, those that are currently in your life and those that have been lost, everyone is vital in your journey in life. Some were meant to pour into you maybe in your 20s. They may not necessarily have been good for you in your 30s journey. So they may have fallen off the wayside, but don't discount the, the contribution that they made to you in your 20s. Don't discount the contributions that some others made for you in your 30s or in your 40s, 50s, 60s. Every single person that has walked through your journey of life was meant to be there at that point in time. Some have fallen off and it is the will of God for them to fall off because where you're going, they may not be able to go with you. Where you go when you need a different set of people and it's okay. And David understood that. So he went on, he left them where they were, where they were weary. And he went on with the 400. So that's, the, that's your circle that's going to the next level with you. It's okay sometimes to prune. It's okay sometimes to prune. And David understood that. And the ones that needed to be on that journey with him, he took them. That was the doing of the Lord. That was the doing of the Lord. So understand that in life, there are times and there are seasons for every single person to pour into you. And there are times and seasons for every single person to fall off. But know that sometimes those that have fallen off, God will bring them back. God will bring them back. You understand me? So now let's look at what, they, what happened on the journey while they were going. I'm telling you, when, when I was preparing for this, I was like, oh, God, okay, 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 okay. Like, he was speaking to me. He was, I, I was getting fed when I was preparing for this. I was getting fed, but I needed this. And Sister Lisa, thank you, because I also needed this for me, you know. But on the way, as they were going, God prepared a destiny helper. Somebody type in the chat, destiny helper. See, when I said that, you need to pray for a spirit of discernment. There's a reason why. Because sometimes our destiny helper doesn't look like what we want them to look like. We, we have an image of what or who our destiny helper is supposed to be and what they're supposed to look like. 
And God will throw you off that game. Because it's God's way, not our way. So you think your destiny helper is going to be having some sort of a, a lot of money or a lot of influence or whatever. But, but God says, no, 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 child. Let me show you what your destiny helper may look like. Trust me, your destiny helper could even be a homeless person on the street. They may say one word to you that will shift your mindset. So don't despise individuals. Don't despise people at the, whatever level they are. Because you know not what they can pour into you. You know not if they are the ones that God is going to use to shift your mindset to your next level. Can I get an amen? You know not when amen. God use someone or who God is going to use. Here it says, let me read it here. They found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. Now, what was the first thing that David had them do? David had them give him water and food to drink. Sometimes when you're doing good, don't do good expecting anything from somebody. Do good because it is in your heart to do so. David fed the man. I always tell people that it doesn't take a lot to be kind to someone. It doesn't take a lot to put a smile on someone's face just by your countenance. Because in that little gesture, that person may be dealing with something that you know not of. But the fact that you gave them that one minute attention to say hello, that one minute attention with a smile made them feel comforted. You might not know that that's what you're doing for them. But sometimes in small gestures that we don't pay attention to, we soothe in somebody else. And that in itself, you don't know where you would meet that person. You don't know what that person is going to become. You don't even know who that person might be. So I would implore all of us on this platform, make kindness to every person, whether you know them or not, a priority for you. Because you don't know who God will bring your way. Number two, never look down on anyone. Because you don't know where that person can go to. The same way, the same flight of steps that takes you up to the top, to the pinnacle, is the same stairs that you will bring down when you're falling. The same people that you meet on your way up are the same people you will meet when you're coming down. So as you're going up and you meet people on the way, stop and feed them. Stop and pour into them. Stop and give them water. Stop and give them a drink. Stop and encourage them and keep on on your journey going up. Because when you're coming back down, maybe they also will be going up and they will also stop and pull you up with them. So never despise anyone at any level where they may be. So now watch this. It says, they gave him water and food to drink. He ate and was revived because he had not eaten food or drunk any water for three days and three nights. Now had David not had his army, his men, feed this man, God, he would not have told them where to go to be able to recover it all. So that man was a key ingredient and a key individual to David unlocking and recovering it all. So that's where I say, you don't know who the Lord will use to be your destiny helper. You don't know who. So David asked, can you, um, he told them, we raided uh, uh, Negev 
and some territory belonging to Judah. And we burned Ziklag. And David asked him, can you lead me down to this raiding party? Now, if you feed someone, you give them something to drink, you make them comfortable, and you need something, you don't think that person is going to give you what you need? If it is within their power, they will. He said, swear to me before God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master, and I will take you to them. He was smart too. He was also smart. So all of us need to get to that point in time where we understand that, you know, take the fist, for instance, right? When you open your hand, you're given to someone. When you open your hand, you're given to someone. But when you close your hand, you're not given to anybody. But guess what? Nothing is also coming into your hand. Until you open your hand to give. When you open your hand to give, someone is taken, but someone also can put back in your hand. But when you close your fist and not give and not pour into, guess what? I can also pour into. I cannot pour into this. I cannot pour into this. So much as we want, we also need to have our hands outstretched to be able to help. And it took David helping this guy out to be able to get an understanding or a location of where his family was, his men's family was, where he will be able to recover it all. I saw them and I was like, Lord, I pray I never miss who my destiny helper is. That should be everyone's prayer. Lord, may I not miss my destiny helper. Lord, may I not miss my destiny helper. If you can unmute yourself and say that, Lord, may I not miss my destiny helper. I would appreciate it. Lord, may Lord, I not miss my Lord, destiny helper. May I not miss Jesus. my destiny helper. Yeah. Yes, God. Yes. Miss my destiny yes. helper. Yes, God. Yes, God. Listen, let, let, let's pray. At this, uh, let's, let's pray. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, let's pray. God, may we not miss my destiny helper. Lord, open our eyes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let me, mighty God, be never destiny helper of others. I pray the same, mighty God, that I never miss those that you have placed into my mind, that alignment to take place, the decision to go forward, God. Father, in your name we pray today, Jesus. I thank you for this lesson, God. It is so timely, Jesus. It is divine. My God intervention, God. Yes, it is what we need, oh, yes. need in this season right now, Lord. And we thank you. Lord, may we not miss Lord, our God. destiny helper is. Hallelujah. The key to not missing your destiny helper is really simple. Love all with the love of God. If it is within your power to help someone out, help someone out. It could take only a smile. It could take only a how are you doing? It could take a hug. Sometimes we're looking for big things. No. Sometimes it's in the little things. Just as sometimes it's in the still small voice that the Lord himself speaks to us. Amen. Now, when he did that, ooh, he showed David where David had to go. And David and his 400 men, David and his 400 men fought them. And David recovered, verse 18 says, David recovered everything that the Amalekites had taken. Someone type in the chat, I will recover everything, everything, everything. David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl. David brought everything 
back. Then it says, he didn't just bring everything that he lost, but God added onto him because he was able to also take from the Amalekites. He took all the flock and the herds from the Amalekites as well. After he recovered everything of his, the Lord added to that as well. Because the Bible says he, he will bless us. He adds no sorrows to it. He increased David the more. Sorry. He increased David the more. So when you heed the leading of the Lord, key, don't go before God. Don't run ahead of God. Because he is the I am that I am. He is the creator of the universe. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell in it. So if the creator of the universe tells you, stop, don't move. Who are you or who am I to go before God? To go ahead of him when he said, relax, I got this. When he says, relax, I've got your back. When he says, relax, I don't need you to stress. We as human beings sometimes need to take a step back and let God be God. Because in God being God, we have a testimony. God can't praise himself. God can't worship himself. We worship him. But God says, if you don't worship me, I will cause the stones to worship me. Now, I for one know that I don't want no stone to take my place of worshiping God. So when we are still and we heed the voice of God, that's in it, that in itself is us saying, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I trust your word. Because he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So you're telling him, Lord, I trust you. And when you give God that, whew, God will show up. Listen, God, God wants to show up and show out for us. We're the ones putting him in a box and try to hinder the man. God says, leave me and let me do what I know how to do best. God will bless you such that you will be on a billboard because guess what? As he blesses you and as he lifts you and as you become great, his name is glorified. And that's a way for you to bring other people to him. Because people want to see, we as human beings, we want to see. So God will shift you to a different dimension of greatness so others can see and say, I want what she has. I want to serve that God that can shift me into a different level and a different dimension of greatness. So our greatness and our elevation, and our promotion, and our recovering it all is also evangelism because it would bring people to God. Because when they ask you, sometimes don't even wait for them to ask you. You will testify. And in you testifying, they sit and say, I want that. I want that God. Just like Nebuchadnezzar, when, when, uh, uh, when, when the, 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 the Hebrew boys were in the, in the furnace fire, when they came out, he said, who is your God? I want to serve that God. So we are really billboards advertising God's goodness. So when we win, we're winning other people to God as well. So in order for us to win, we got to be still and let God be God. Amen. So now when Dave recovered it all, uh, when David recovered it all, now here's the kicker. Before I had said that people will drop off, time and seasons for everyone, people will drop off. But then again, some of them might come back. Now here in verse 21, it says, David came to the 200 men that he had left, right? And they came out to meet David. But the 400 were like, whoa, 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 hold up. Why are we going to give them some of what we recovered when they didn't go on the journey with us? Now, here's where I say, 
when the Lord blesses you, he doesn't expect for you to be selfish with the blessing. When you recover it all, the Lord doesn't want you to be selfish with it. Again, back to the hand. As you give, more is put in your hand. Hey. As you give, more is put in your hand. Don't worry about what they did or didn't do. If they need help, you give. True. Sure. If they need help, you give. That's your job as a Christian. That's your job. Thank you, Lisa. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over what men give to your bosom. Because you don't have to be selfish with what God gives you. David was not selfish with what God gave him. And God trusted David knowing who David is, knowing that David will give back. Can God trust you? When God lets you recover it all, can the most high God trust you to give back? Can the most high God trust you to help someone out? Because when the Lord elevates you, it's not just for you. When the Lord helps you recover it all, it's not just for you. It is so that you can also be a testimony to other people. It's like a ripple effect. It, there, there's this thing where I, I see it on, on on social media a lot where you said pay it forward where you go to a drive through and you you buy your Dunkin Donuts and someone has already paid for it so then you pay for the next person behind you the car behind you and they also get there and they also pay for the next person behind them it's a ripple effect don't be selfish when you're recovering it all as you recover it all again Heed the voice of the Most High God. When you recover it all, and the Lord says, bless sister so so and so, bless this brother. Don't hold it all to yourself because guess what? The same way that God helped you to recover it all, you could, you could lose it in an instant. You could lose it in an instant. So when we recover it all, we need to keep our hands open. I'm recovering and I'm giving. You're giving. You're giving. You're giving. That right there is powerful because it is in giving that we also receive. David shared what he had gotten. What he recovered, he also shared it. He said to his, see, his uh, in verse 23, he told the 400 who were saying, because did it, uh, let me start from verse 22. So it says, but all the troublemakers uh, among David's followers said, because they did not go out with us, we will not share with them the plunder we recovered. However, each man may take his wife and children and go. And here's David's reply. No, my brothers, you must not do that with what the Lord has given us. He has protected us and delivered into our hands the raiding party that came against us. The share of the man who stayed with the supplies is to be the same as that of him that went down to battle. All will share alike. All will share alike. When we recover it all, and God will let us recover it all, we also need to understand that it's in giving that we receive. God will press it upon you that maybe this person needs help or that person needs help. And that's why when God is letting you recover it all, he will add onto it. That adding that he's adding onto it is for you to be able to give it to others. It's for you to be able to give it to others. So when it comes to recovering it all, there are different facets of recovering it all. There are different ways of recovering it all. But the formula for recovering it all 
is very simple. You got to go to the Lord first. You first got to go to the Lord. And you got to hear what he's saying. Shut everything out. Shut everything out and seek the face of God. And let God whisper to you. So what I'll leave you with is just the points that we, we talked about today. Seek the face of God first. See, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. And its righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. The formula that we need is in the word of God. Oh, I left my Bible. I, oh, it's right here. The formula that we need it's right here. We worry and we fret when everything we need is here. Every assurance that we have is in here. All we got to do is to open it up. All we got to do is to pray to God for discernment to know which Bible verse will lift our spirit up. We wait on the Lord. David waited on the Lord. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and they will not grow weary. It's in here. It's in here. It's in the word of God. When you wait on him, he will renew your strength. He will give you the strategy that you need. He will open your eyes to things that you may not even have thought of. But you got to be focused on him and block out all distractions. Sometimes we listen too much. If David had listened to his men who said the 200 didn't go with us so they don't get to get the spoil. If he had listened to them, he would have made a wrong move. Because God didn't let him recover it all and add onto him for him to keep it to himself. I know it's hard when people have wronged us to go back and say we're helping them out. Oh, but there's power in that. There's power in that. Can you imagine someone that fell off the wayside but you're helping them. It takes a strong heart to do that. But the creator who knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb knows what he's placed in you. So he knows the strength that you have. So while you wait on the Lord and you're still and you're hearing his voice, also pray for a spirit of discernment to be able to locate who your destiny helper is so you don't miss who your destiny helper is. Because your destiny helper is the added ingredient for you to recover it all. Your destiny helper is the roadmap. He has the treasure map to where you're going to recover it all. Don't despise anyone's humble beginnings. Don't despise anyone because we are all created in the image and in the likeness of God. Every single person you encounter in this world, in your journey in life, was meant to be there. The good, the bad, and the ugly. They are all necessary ingredients for your journey in life. And I implore you to learn the lessons that you're supposed to learn by all these things that would happen. Because that is what will make you who you are. That is what will let us experience the wholesome you that God created you to be in recovering it all. So in closing, I would just say, think maybe four things. Number one, inquire of the Lord when you need to recover it all. Don't go forward before him. Don't go ahead of him. Let him lead the way. Number two, Block everything out and be still and know that he 
is God. He will lead you. Number three, pray for a spirit of discernment to be able to locate who your destiny helper is. Because your destiny helper is key to you recovering it all. Number four, when, not if, because you will recover it. When you recover it all, and God will let you recover and then some. When you recover it all, don't be selfish about it. Because God is not placing it in you for you to keep it to yourself. God is placing it in you for you to be able to give to others as well. And the fifth one is the life lesson. There's a time and a season for everybody in your life. Some people will drop off. It's okay. Don't keep holding on to people that are supposed to have dropped off because they weren't meant for that journey. And every single person in your life was meant to be in your life at that point in time. I pray that the Lord will give us the strength to always seek his face. I pray that the Lord will give us a spirit of discernment to locate our destiny helper. I pray that the Lord will let each and every one of us recover it all and then some. And that when we do recover, we will not be quiet about it, but we will testify of the Lord's goodness, the Lord's grace, and the Lord's favor. I pray that you were blessed by this short exhortation that the Lord placed on my heart to release unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for Hallelujah. I know we were all blessed today. And I'm actually going to ask if we could just pray over the, the lesson, you know, uh, the theme recovered, all what has been imparted to us today, and then we will take specific prayer requests. But um, if we could, um, all who are able to unmute, we're just going to pray over this lesson today as mm -hmm. the Lord leads each and every person. And we know what needs to, what we desire to be recovered and restored in our mm -hmm. own lives. And if we could just put it before the Lord right now. I had reinforcement for this morning. I am to leave everything in your end of the The Lord God. Life, 
Amen. Work in Jesus Christ, the Lord. The Lord. Thank you, Pastor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' Jesus name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Forget about ourselves. Concentrate on him and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves. Concentrate on him and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves. Concentrate on him and worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Jesus Christ, the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the word. Thank you, sister, for the word. I needed those words this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Lord never does anything wrong. Never does anything wrong. He always brings us to what we need and where we need. Sometimes you're sitting down there saying, my God, was that word for me this morning? That word was for me this morning. Anyone else can claim it because you know what? That's our God. Amen, amen, amen. He's not a singular God. He's not a singular God. He That's is an right. all around God. He Hallelujah, gives us all Jesus. that we need. Limited. He can Father. feed us Hallelujah. all at the same time. Thank Hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sister Sylvia, I just want to thank God for that word this morning and your obedience to bring it forth in the way that there is no doubt about if that word. Like the sister said, I know the word is for me. My conversation this morning with another member of this line says the same thing. God will handle our business while we're looking out for others, right? And we say, you know, we talk about pulling someone up, you know, uh, having someone to whoever that person is going to be. But it's also how do we pay it forward in the midst of us, you know, reaching for the hands of God too as well. And so I just want to thank you for your obedience and that word this morning. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful for this wonderful outpouring. You know, Sister Marcia said this was for me. And I just looked at the locations on the smart platform. It's just a small group of us. But here's Connecticut. Here is the United Kingdom. Here is California. Here is Jamaica. Here is Atlanta. Here is North Carolina. And look at that mighty God that can touch so Hallelujah! Is what I say. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty. Praise the Lord. Time our place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is just wonderful. There is no limit to our God. What he what he will take from this place to make sure you get it hundreds of miles away, thousands of miles away. That is our God. His hand is not too short. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank God for this lesson. And you know, we just he's such an on-time God. He knows what we need. I might have given it to you before, but I'm gonna give it to you again and again and again so that it can produce the fruit, so that it can be on time for whatever. We're, it's ministering to our spirit right now. So thank you, Sister Sylvia, so, so, so much. And I thank him for pouring back into you. It's certainly an on-time word for you just ending, you know, your job this week, you know. I'm telling you, man, I, I was like, listen, it's God-driven. Mm. Because when I was preparing, I was being blessed because I also needed that, you know. So I, I thank you. We thank God. He 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 supplies all yeah. our needs, you know, and he provides for himself and we are his children. So I, I thank him so much. That's why we don't have to worry about anything, right? This is a testimony in itself. The lesson is a wonderful blessing. This is a testimony. He's He's, he's just so precise, as we said, even talking about the Shunammite woman a couple of weeks ago, for the king to be having a conversation with um, Gehazi at the time she's returning 
to her land so that she can be restored, right? God mm -hmm. is on time. So we give him all honor, glory, and praise. So Amen. as now, because he says, ask, even though I feel like we have enough, I'm so full, you know, we're still going to put our requests, make our requests known before him because he wants us, you know, to ask him. So whatever your request may be at this time, please, we will pray. We will come together. And he says, if two shall, you know, agree on anything, it will be done. So if you have any requests at this time, I'm just going to stop the, the recording and I'm just going to announce if anyone is watching this recording and would like to join us on any given Saturday, you're welcome to do so from wherever you are in the world. If you look at the description, you will see the link, the Zoom information for you to reach out to us and to connect with us on any Saturday. Thank you. With that, going to ask.